Presenting Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, a new weekly feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music and first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring you the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economically family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. <laughs> Now, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight, the famous old investigator's case is entitled The Poison Sandwich Murder Case. Our scene opens in the office of Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his friend and partner, Mike Clancy. The telephone is ringing. And when Mike picks up the receiver to answer... He starts a chain of strange and fearful incidents that will eventually lead to a most surprising conclusion. Mr. Keene's office. Mr. Keene? No, this is Mike Clancy, Mr. Keene's partner. Well, may I speak to Mr. Keene, please? It's very urgent. My name is Stuart Blair. Well, just a second, Mr. Blair. Well, Mr. Keene? Yes, Mike? Uh, someone on the phone named Stuart Blair wants to talk to you. He says it's important. Stuart Blair? I don't believe I know him. I'll take it, Mike. Thank you. Hello? Mr. Keene. Yes? This is Stuart Blair. I'm a law student, Mr. Keene. I live at number 93 Regal Street. What can I do for you, Mr. Blair? I'd like an appointment to see you as soon as possible. It's extremely urgent. What's it about? I'd rather not discuss it over the telephone. Well, let me look at my appointment list. I can see you tomorrow morning if it's convenient. But tomorrow... Tomorrow may be too late. I must... Hello? I... I must see you today, Mr. Keene. Mr. Blair, what's the trouble? You sound ill. I... I don't know. I feel... I, I'm dying. I... Uh, Mr. Blair. Hello. Hello. 93 Regal Street, Mike, and we'd better hurry. The door must be bolted on the inside, Mr. Keene, sir. I, I can't manage to open this lock. Can you break it open, Mike? Well, maybe. Just stand to one side, boss. <coughs> well, she's given away. This one ought to do it. <coughs> there he is, Mike, on the floor. It must be Stuart Blair. Thanks for service, boss. He's dead. I was afraid we'd be too late. Do you see any marks of violence on him, Mike? No, sir. Judging by his color and the expression on his face, I'd say he was poisoned. From something in this sandwich he was eating. Now, this is murder. Well, it looks that way, Mr. Keene. Well, let's have a quick look around before we call the police, Mike. What's in this closet? Well, it's just full of suits, boss. There must be over a dozen suits here. And six pairs of shoes. Well, this fellow Blair seemed to be well off. Yet this apartment isn't an expensive one. Odd. Uh, there's a photograph here on the dresser, Mr. Keene, sir. Yes, I noticed that, Mike. She's a very attractive woman. It says, with admiration and respect, from Lenore. All right, Mike. Notify the police. Boss, look. There's a young girl standing at the open door. Who are you, miss? I'm Joy Harms. Isn't this Stuart Blair's apartment? 
Stuart! Hey, don't touch him, please. What's the matter with him? Is he ill? I'm afraid he's dead. Dead? Oh, no. No, he can't be. Stuart! Oh, Mr. Stuart. King, she's passing out. Bring her over to a chair, will you, Mike? Here. Easy now. There. And you'd better phone the police. I'd like them to perform an autopsy so that we can know what poison killed Stuart Blair. That I will, Mr. Keene. Now, Miss Harms. Yes, Mr. Keene. May I ask why you happened to come here just after this young man was murdered? Murdered, Mr. Keene? Stuart murdered? In my opinion, there's no question of it, Joy. Oh, no. You see that partly eaten sandwich beside the telephone? Yes. It contained the poison that killed him. Mr. Keene, surely you don't think I know anything about that sandwich. I didn't say anything about that, Joy. I only asked you why you happened to come here at this time. Stuart and I made a date yesterday. I was to pick him up here in my car and take a drive in the country. I assume, then, that the last time you talked to him was yesterday, and that you didn't see him at any time today. I see quite clearly that you have the idea I had something to do with Stuart's murder. I'm afraid you misunderstand me, Joy. Mr. Kane, sir. Yes, Mike? Well, the police are sending for the body, and they'll, they'll give you an autopsy fast. Well, thank you, Mike. If you don't mind, I'll leave now, Mr. Keene. Oh, Joy, have you any idea whose photograph that is on the dresser? Uh, the one signed Lenore. Why, yes. That's Lenore Barclay. Lenore Barclay? She works for some book publishing firm. She's what you might call a career woman, Mr. Keene. Well, if you're asking me, miss, you're a bit jealous of the lady in the picture. I'm not asking you anything. Well, now, don't be flying off the handle so quick. Mr. Keene, now may I go? Yes, but first will you please write your name and address on this slip of paper? Please, Mr. Keene, don't ask me to leave my address. Well, the police will undoubtedly want to question you further, Joy. And so will Mr. Keene and I, young lady. Joy probably has some very good reason for her reluctance to give her address, Mike. Oh, I have, Mr. Keene. My father is Philip Harms, the film manufacturer. I can't afford to have my name dragged into a thing like this. There's no way you can avoid that, Joy. Remember, there's a murder involved. Oh, very well, then. Here, Mr. Keene. Thank you, Joy. You may go now. Goodbye, Mr. Keene. It seems to me you're letting her off pretty easy, boss. She said her father was the big film manufacturer, Philip Harms, Mike. And if I'm not mistaken, the poison sandwich that kills Stuart Blair smells of a highly poisonous chemical used in making or developing film. Say, it's preserve us, boss. We'll now proceed to Lenore Barclay as the lady in the photograph. We'll look up her address in the phone book, Mike. Well, here we are at the Carter Publishing Company where Lenore Barclay works, boss. And here's Miss Barclay's office, Mike. Oh, Miss Barclay, assistant to the publisher. She's got a good job, all right, Mr. Keene. Come in. Miss Barclay? Yes? I'm Mr. Keene. Oh, yes. My secretary told me that you were on your way in. You're a private investigator, Mr. Keene? Yes, and this is my partner, Mr. Clancy. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Uh, will you sit down, gentlemen? Thank you. Uh, we're here on a rather unhappy mission, Miss Barclay, and I want you to prepare yourself for a shock. Nothing's happened to Mother. No, I'm not here in regard to your mother. Oh, thank heaven. I'm concerned with a friend of yours, a man named Stuart Blair. Stuart? What about him? He's been Murdered? Murdered? His body was found this afternoon in his apartment. Oh. He had been poisoned. Oh, I... I don't know what to say. It, it's all so... No, no, no. Take it easy, Miss Barclay. Oh, it's just that... That Stuart and I were such good friends. It's hard to realize that... I understand. Who poisoned Stuart, Mr. Keene? We don't know yet, Miss Barclay. I was hoping you'd be able to give us some information. I saw Stuart yesterday for about an hour. He seemed upset, but he didn't tell me what it was about. I'm sorry now that I didn't make him tell me. Do you know a girl named Joy Harms? Joy Harms? Yes, I've met her, Mr. Keene. She's blonde and rather pretty. And what was her relationship with Stuart? They were very good friends, I believe. She'll be just as shocked about this as I am. Come in. Oh, 
excuse me, Lenore. I didn't know you were busy. Alfred, uh, this is Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. They're private investigators. My employer, Mr. Carter. How do you do? How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Keene, aren't you the famous investigator who solved the Bester case some time ago? Yes, we handled that case, Mr. Carter. Uh, what are you doing here? Something horrible has happened, Alfred. You remember my friend, Stuart Blair? Oh, yes, the law student. He's been murdered. Great Scott. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, Mr. Keene. Uh, Stuart wasn't a bad young man, rather impulsive at times, but straightforward. I remember how madly in love he was with that Harms girl. Madly in love with her? You didn't mention that, Miss Barclay. Well, I, I didn't want to place the girl in an embarrassing position, Mr. Keene. Besides, Stuart rarely talked to me about her, and I didn't pry into his personal affairs. Was Stuart Blair well-to-do? Oh, I doubt it. Uh, he came to me once and asked for a job here. He wanted to work during the summer between law school sessions. Did you take him on, Mr. Carter? No, Mr. Keene. Things are usually slow in the summer, and I couldn't use him. Uh, well, I have to get back to my office. And, Lenore, you'd better take the rest of the day off, my dear, and relax. Thank you, Alfred. Well, if there's anything further I can do for you, Mr. Keene, just let me know. Glad to have met you, gentlemen. Now, thank you, Mr. Carter. Mr. Keene, I... I think I'll go home now. I'm... I'm not feeling very well. And perhaps Mike and I can drop you off, Miss Barclay. Oh, I can get a cab, thank you. I... Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. I feel so peculiar. I think you'd better let us take you home. Yes, yes, perhaps. Oh, no. No, wait. I... I feel so ill. Mr. Keene, something. Call a doctor. Now sit down over here, Miss Barclay. Water. I want some. Now don't touch that water bottle. Uh. Mike, get a doctor quickly. Oh. I think she's been given a dose of what Blair got. She's been poisoned. Mr. Keene will return in just a moment. But first, here's a word from RCA Victor. RCA Victor table model television is the best you can buy and at the lowest possible cost, too. It's million-proof television with quality proven in millions of homes. Stop in at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and see how little it costs to own the best. You'll find a selection of table model receivers ranging from 19-inch to 17-inch to 14-inch tube sizes. The 19-inch York, for example, is television's top table model, it's a big screen beauty with unequal performance. The RCA Victor Newport is another, a set that's all picture. And so is the Kent Ensemble, 17 big inches of million-proof television. Then there's the Bentley. Yes, RCA Victor's Bentley brings in 14 inches of the clearest, brightest pictures you've ever seen. They're available now, these four great table model television sets that illustrate the perfect combination of quality, value, and economy found only in RCA Victor. Now back to Mr. Keene and the poison sandwich murder case. While investigating the death of young Stuart Blair, who was murdered by eating a poison sandwich, Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner Mike Clancy happen upon another attempted poisoning, that of attractive Lenore Barclay, who is assistant to the publisher, Alfred Carter. It's half an hour after Lenore's sudden collapse, and in her office, Mr. Keene is saying, You'll be all right now, Miss Barclay. The doctor suggested that you rest here for a while, and then go home. Thank you, Mr. Keene. I can't understand it. How could anything like that happen right here in my office? The poison was evidently placed in the water bottle on her desk, Mr. Carter. I'm having it analyzed now. Luckily, Miss Barclay only had a sip of it. Saints preserve us, but a, a glass full of that stuff would kill an elephant. You're right, Mike. Miss Barclay was very lucky. The same type poison was in the sandwich that killed Stuart Blair. But I, I don't know why someone should want to kill me, Mr. Keene. I have no enemies. Have you had any visitors in your office today, Miss Barclay? Yes, one. Joy Harms. Joy Harms? She came to see me this morning. And now that this has happened... I'm going to tell you everything, Mr. Keene. Joy came here to pick a fight. Why, Miss Barclay? She said that I was turning Stuart's mind against her. Oh, it was all nonsense, of course. But I, I couldn't reason with the girl. Well, 
That makes things look pretty dark for Joy Holmes. Uh, Mike, call Lieutenant Hale at police headquarters right away, will you? Uh, yes, Mr. Keene. Are you sure you're feeling better, Lenore? I'll be all right, Alfred. If Mr. Keene would be kind enough to take me home, I'm sure I'll be all over this in a few hours. We'll take you home as soon as you feel strong enough to move, Miss Barclay. Oh, Lieutenant Hale, Mr. Keene wants a word with you. Uh, here you are, boss. Oh, thanks, Mike. Hello, Lieutenant Hale. Have you the autopsy report on Stuart Blair? He was poisoned. With what kind of poison? That's what I thought from the odor of the sandwich he was eating when he died. This is my home, Mr. Keene. I suppose you'd rather Mike Clancy and I didn't mention the poison episode to anyone, Miss Barclay? Oh, no, no. I never keep secrets from Mother. I I just as soon tell her. It's Lenore, Mother. What are you doing home so early? I... Oh, you have guests. Uh, this is Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Something happened to me today, Mother, and I don't want you to become excited. What was it? Someone tried to poison me. No. Have you seen a doctor? Yes, Mrs. Barclay, and your daughter is perfectly all right now. There's something else I want to tell you, Mother. You'll read about it in the newspapers anyway. What is it, Lenore? Stuart Blair was murdered... Murdered? I, I I think I'd better sit down for a moment. I... Let me get you a glass of water. I know how shocking all this news must be to you, Mrs. Barclay, but Mike Clancy and I are investigating this case along with the police, and I wanted to ask you a question or two. Yes, of course, Mr. Keene. Did you know Stuart Blair? He came here to the house several times. Frankly, I never liked him. Mother! Lenore, I may as well tell these gentlemen the truth. Here, take this water. Thank you. Why didn't you like Stuart Blair, Mrs. Barclay? Because he was shiftless and lazy, Mr. Keene, always borrowing money from his friends. Why, he took at least $2,000 from my daughter Lenore during the past year. Stuart needed it, Mother, and I had to help him, that's all. It's true, Lenore, you make a great deal of money for a woman your age. But instead of saving, you give it away. And most of it to Stuart. Mother, please. Don't misunderstand me, Mr. Keene. I'm only telling you this to show you how good my daughter was to Stuart. And so you won't think that she's been implicated in anything as horrible as murder. Scarcely, Mrs. Barclay. Your daughter was poisoned herself and saved just in time. Lenore's a generous girl. <laughs> Too generous with the wrong people. The one thing I've always dreaded was a penniless old age. Lenore took good care of me, but... Oh, Mother, now let's not go through that again. I, I'd like to be alone for a while, if, if you don't mind. I, I have some things to do. Don't mind, Mother, Mr. Keene. She's getting old, and... Well, she has some strange ideas. I trust you'll be all right now, Miss Barclay, so Mike and I will leave. Oh, by the way, you said you saw Stuart Blair yesterday. Yes, Mr. Keene, we uh, had lunch together. I just wanted to check on his whereabouts during the past 24 hours. If you need me for anything, Miss Barclay, don't hesitate to call. Here, here's my card. Thank you, and goodbye, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. And goodbye, Miss Barclay. So long. Well, Mrs. Barclay certainly didn't take to Stuart Blair, the murdered man, did she, Mr. Keene? She hated him all right, Mike, and I wonder why. The reason couldn't have only been the money he borrowed from her daughter, Lenore. Oh, this case gets tougher and tougher as we go along. There have been two clues that struck me during the past hour or so, which may give me a lead. Everything depends now on what we learn from Joy Harms. She's the one who may hold the answer to the riddle of who murdered Stuart Blair and why. I just want to step into my office for a few minutes, Mike. I left some papers on my desk. Uh, do you have the key? Uh, yes, Mr. Keene. <laughs> that was careless of me. I forgot to lock the office door when we left this morning. No, well, we were in such a hurry to get to Stuart Blair's apartment after he called. I, I didn't think of it myself. And better snap on the lights, Mike. Right, sir. 
Mike. Yes, boss? Someone's hiding in that closet. The door moved shut. Come out of there. And keep your hands high or I'll shoot. No. No, please don't shoot. Mr. Kane, it's Joy Hans. What are you doing here? I just had to see you. Help me, Mr. Keene. Don't let them put me in jail. My father will disown me if he finds out. I'm afraid there's a strong case against you, Miss Harms. And you're making it stronger by what you're saying now. Now, what is it you know that you haven't told me? I didn't kill Stuart Blair. What people are saying isn't true. Stuart didn't jilt me. He loved me. And I loved him. The poison that killed Stuart is a type that's used in making film. Something you might have easy access to, Joy, inasmuch as your father's in the film business. Besides that, there was an attempt on Lenore Barclay's life with the same poison, soon after you'd seen her in her office. I only went there to tell her that Stuart and I were to be married. I swear I didn't try to kill her today, Mr. King. Stuart Blair proposed marriage to you? Yesterday, at lunch. You had lunch with Blair yesterday? Yes. Mr. King, either this fellow Blair ate nine times a day... Or somebody's lying. We'll find out who's lying right now, Mike. Come along, Joy. They're taking me to the police? I'm taking you to Lenore Barclay's home. But first, Mike, we'll make a stop at the laboratory where that poisoned water was analyzed. You've got a new hunch, boss? What is it? If I'm right, Mike, if what I'm beginning to believe is true, we'll discover a solution to this case that will amaze you. Mr. Keene. Good evening, Mrs. Bartley. Is your daughter at home? Uh, she's inside talking to Mr. Carter. He came over after work to see how she was. You remember my partner, Mike Clancy, and this is Joy Harms. Who is it, Mother? It's Mr. Keene, Lenore. Oh, good evening, Miss Bartley. Mr. Carter. How are you, Mr. Keene? Hello, Joy. Hello. I brought Joy Harms over to corroborate something, Miss Bartley. You said you had lunch with Stuart Blair yesterday. Well? Joy Harms seems to have had lunch with him, too. She's lying. I can prove I was with him from one to three. We were seen together in the restaurant. No. Well, didn't we have lunch together yesterday afternoon? Oh, uh, well, uh, maybe I, I made a mistake, Alfred. It, it must have been the day before when I dined with Stuart. I, I can't remember. You've made several mistakes, Miss Barclay, and they're beginning to catch up with you. What do you mean, Mr. Keene? For one thing, you never touched a drop of water from that bottle on your desk. Well, then, then what made me so ill? Nothing. You were play-acting. Why? You poisoned that water so it would appear that Joy Harms had tried to kill you. But you never touched a drop. The chemist just told me that there was so great a concentration of poison in the water that even a few drops would have killed you. Just what are you driving at, Mr. Keene? Simply this, Miss Barclay. You killed Stuart Blair. You entered his apartment and poisoned a sandwich you knew he'd eat. He probably found out you wanted to kill him. That's why he tried to get in touch with me. No, be quiet, Mother. You planned it so that Joy Harms would be a suspect. You used a poison that her father used in his manufacturing process, something that would be traced to Joy. The lie you told about having lunch with Stuart was unimportant in itself. But it led to other things. Oh, I, I can't believe this is true of my daughter. Your daughter did something else to arouse my suspicions, Mrs. Barclay. Ordinarily, a girl would never tell her mother an attempt was made on her life. She'd want to spare her mother worry. But you practically insisted on telling your mother, Miss Barclay. Why? Did you believe that even your mother was suspicious of you? And that this would take her off the track? She's ill, Mr. Keene. That boy, Stuart Blair, made her ill. Mother, be quiet. He deserved it. I supported him, gave him money, bought him his clothes. Why, I even paid his way through law school. And then he turned me down for this pampered little idiot, Joy Hans. I just couldn't stand knowing he'd marry her. Oh, I should have known. It was a fixation, Mr. Keene, in her mind. That boy had her hypnotized. If she'd only married Mr. Carter here, as I hoped she would. Well, I'm certainly glad she didn't. You're glad. <laughs> That's rich. She's glad. Do you think I'd even go near you? 
Stuart was the handsomest man I ever met. Oh, oh but I loved him. <laughs> I loved him more than anything else in the world. <laughs> when you love someone, Miss Barclay, you don't end his life. I don't care what you do to me now, Mr. Keene. I don't care. Miss Keene, my daughter's ill. I I'll testify she's out of her mind. It won't help, Mrs. Barclay. Your daughter is far from insane. She is insane. I know it's a hard blow for you, Mrs. Barclay, but you must brace yourself to the realization that your daughter planned and executed a very clever murder, and the courts will so judge. Lenore, what's to become of me? You know if I had a fortune, I'd spend it all to save you. But you have no fortune. And you nag me for spending what I earned on the man I love so you could enjoy luxuries. Now you'll have that chance to take care of yourself. And you can't do it. You'll die in the poorhouse. And you'll die for murder, young lady. Oh, Lenore, Lenore. Mike. Telephone the police and inform them we've solved the murder of Stuart Blair. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the poison sandwich murder case. Let's drop in on Bob Hope and High Averback and see what the boys are cooking up for vacation. By the way, High, where are you going to spend your vacation? Well, I'm a nature lover, Bob. I've got a beautiful spot picked out. Any direction I look, all I can see is green. Yeah, how do you get in the Crosby's vault? Well, speaking of money, friends, when you saved up for a big summer weekend or vacation, you want to make every minute count. You like to go where you want, do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want. Chesterfield. Chesterfields give you mildness. Over 1,500 tobacco growers tell you that Chesterfield's milder aroma means a milder smoke. And the country's first and only cigarette taste panel found that of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. So slip a couple of cartons of Chesterfields in that vacation suitcase. Remember the words of Bob Chesterfield Hope. Whether you go by plane, train, or bus, take the cigarette with mildness plus. I mean Chesterfield. Listen again next week to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, a new weekly feature on NBC's all-star festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, Neuritis and Neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music and first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Henry Howard is the director. Philip Clark plays Mr. Keene. Your announcer, Jack Costello. Remember, Mr. Keene is now on the air at this new time, every Friday at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Friday when the kindly old tracer turns to the fire escape murder case. Next, it's Roy Shield and Company on NBC.